find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, the show where we get geeky and have some fun with tech and online and, and new apps that are named after fruit and so much more. Like I said, Mike Sorg about here in the Pittsburgh area, doing some technology, doing some videography, doing some podcasting, and and um, and I'm just having fun with all the stuff. Uh, with me on the line from Studio C is John Chichella. He's our gadget hound here on the awesome cast from uh, uh, some big tower place downtown uh doing some cool stuff actually on the twitters how you doing sir pretty good coming in from studio b i gotta figure out a way to get what's behind me bigger to fill my entire background because i have the new apple tv kicking the new york city flyover um so that's why i was asking about cam twist but i'm doing pretty good how are you doing today a little snowy out there a little snowy a little snowy uh well apparently playing havoc on our schedule for podcasting (laughs) of all things um of course everybody's uh uh, locked in their house tonight and uh and and rescheduling some 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 people uh that we're having interviews with but uh hey it's fine also with us also from uh studio k is katie dudas at k dudders on the twitter she's a social media crazy person over at uh the scare house amongst a million other jobs uh how you doing (laughs) hi guys how are you i'm working on your I'm working on your introduction a little bit, so <laughs> it's working progress. Good luck with that. When you figure that out, let me know because so I can steal it. There you go. I, we, 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 I imagine you have the same problem I do when I go and somebody's like, oh, what do you do? Like, I don't know what part to pick to introduce myself as. It's kind of like, okay, who is my audience? What do they want to hear? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and a lot of times I forget. I try to, like, on the way to an event, say, say who am I tonight? And... <laughs> Which isn't I'm like Batman. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but am I a podcaster? Am I a video professional? Am I an entrepreneur? Uh, just kind of the, decide what what that thing is. Um, but anyways, uh, but like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. This is where we get geeky over awesomecast.net. You can check out all the episodes and our interviews. The Awesome Chat. I swear there will be an Awesome Chat sooner or later. Um, it feels like I'm cursed with scheduling here in the uh, beginning part of 2016 as we're figuring this out. Um, but we'll get rolling on that. In the meantime, we got so much more going on around the network at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can drop us an email if you have any awesome things of the week, any stories you think we should be talking about. Awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, on the Twitters at Awesomecast. And of course, Facebook. You know, there's a Facebook group and there's been a lot of activity. Uh, thank you. Uh, some of the guys dropping in there. John Carmen, Chili. I think you've been in there as well. Doug Durda. Um, just having some conversation around the stories. We're switching up some of our strategy and where we put those things here. And uh, thank you so much to anybody that has any uh, commentary about that kind of stuff. And uh, now that we actually have some activity over there, I need to start kind of working that into the show a little bit. Uh, so we'll be poking at that a little bit as well. Uh, you can subscribe to us. Links over there again at awesomecast.net. We're on YouTube, iTunes, Citrus Speaker, iHeartRadio, and where fine podcasts are sold. Uh, you can also join us live at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Usually it's about a half an hour of us poking at new apps and installing the thing that's uh, that we just heard about uh, that, we'll be, <laughs> that we'll be talking about here on the show, and uh, which in this case was Peach. And I think we'll talk about that here uh, a little bit uh, further into the show uh, as well. We, we didn't really put it in the rundown. We're just like, we just started talking about it. We're just like, hey, this should be on the show. So we'll, 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 we'll come back to this. And hopefully by net, then, um, Katie may have updated her phone and she might have it as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> future! In the future. Um, just to, you know, just put a cut in there. Everything will be just fine. Um, so uh, with that, uh, oh, hey, big thanks to our friends. Um, uh, Patreon.com slash awesomecast. First of all, if you're uh, listening to the show, enjoying the show, sharing the show, getting the word out there, we big time, big time appreciate that. But of course, you can go to patreon.com slash awesomecast and uh, give a couple bucks, give a buck, give a penny, whatever the case may be. Um, we have some great contributors that are really contributing to, um, as uh, we just had our State of the Awesome Cast video go out, and I discussed a little bit of what we're going to be doing with that money here in 2016 um, that Katie's going to be helping me with to help get uh, some new people listening here. Right, Katie? <clears throat> <laughs> 
<laughs> we have plants. No, no, not that. Not that. Not, not, <laughs> oh, not, dang it. We're not making it rain. It, it's not, I mean, we don't have rain level con- contributors. But if you want to help us make it rain, <laughs> that's, a, that's a horrible pitch for contributions. Uh, I need to work on this. Um, but thank you so much to those that have been contributing for a, for a good while. They've gotten everything from business cards to cookies for Christmas uh, at our executive producer level over there at the $5 level. This will see business development at Harry over there. And, of course, the Mike Fedor Show. Mike Fedor Show on the Twitters. And uh, this will see on the Twitters for the other ones. Thank you so much to them. And uh, please uh, contribute or at least share, like, comment on, on iTunes. You know, we still have no comments on iTunes for as many people <laughs> that listen to this show. I, 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 I commented. I commented and gave it a rating. You've commented. Oh, I need to look at this thing because I swear that nothing is coming up on, on this. I want to investigate while one of you guys is telling me about your awesome thing of the week. Uh, uh, Katie, let's start with you then um, because this I, I saw this. I did not investigate this, but I, I want to know more. What is your awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing of the week is you can chat with Miss Piggy on Facebook Messenger. What? I know. I'm out of control. Uh, what it is is um, impersonal, in person. Sorry, it's an AI that was created, so you can actually chat. It's kind of reminding me of Smarter Child, if you remember back in uh, AM, AM wow, days. Wow, that brings back memories. I know. How many times did you ask them stupid questions and getting good responses? I, I kind of was a fan. Sometimes you just want to chat with them. But what it is, it's an AI that you can chat with. They're kind of working at celebrities right now, um, movie characters, not so much real life people, but people who are kind of actual characters and um they have a certain time period that you can chat with them like miss piggy if you try to chat with her now she will tell you she's not available right now but if you chat during that time period um, that she's available she will answer some of your questions um and very miss piggy like responses not you know obviously not a flawless technology uh but it's pretty cool and it's a fun thing to play with um but what's cool is eventually this might lead into other apps such as like if you were chatting with somebody who was a character in a movie and let's say um dead han solo (laughs) and at this point if that's not a spoil if that's a spoiler for you then you just are should not be watching our show to begin with and um so they want to connect that to you know a particular character and then connect to fandango to get a show time then um that would be a fun way to do that also be great for customer service uh, if you're tired of, you know, what time are your hours? What's, you know, where can I buy tickets? And then that way it would take you to the ticket purchasing area. But um, there's roughly, they said, about 6,000 responses for Miss Piggy. So oh, wow. <laughs> feel free to quiz her away. But it's it's a fun, I think it's a fun thing. And it's starting to roll just now. Um, but we, we, you can kind of expect to see a little bit more of this in the future. I, I, I want to set an alarm for myself for like 1 p.m. tomorrow to go talk to her because it's uh, 10, mm-hmm. 10 noon Pacific time, it looks like. Because uh, if you haven't watched the show, Piggy is definitely a West Coast kind of girl. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, no, I think that's funny. And yeah, I remember that because I, I remember AOL Instant Messenger like having to chat with Santa Claus. And he'd tell me I was a naughty boy, you know, uh, back in the day. <laughs> and, and I was like 20 at the time. So it was a little awkward. Uh, so, you know, like you said, not really new, but let's see what happens with the power of Facebook behind it. Right. I, one of the, one of the things I, I really liked is they, they're actually working with a movie called unfriended that's coming out. And what it is, is it's one of the characters who actually kills themselves because they were bullied on social media. You can chat with them from like beyond the grave, like they're haunting people who are, you know, were harassing them on social media, which would be kind of like you, I guess, <laughs> would play that character. But it's an interesting way to um, advertise a movie. Yeah, I think I saw the trailer for this. Like, I think this is a trailer that I saw in the theater a few months ago and mm-hmm. just kind of turned and says, really, that's happening? Um, uh, like, this is not so much like, you know, the, uh, the what was the Skype one? That uh, it was it was like a found footage, but all via Skype. And there was somebody haunting uh them or or am i think or is this like a new version of the same thing could be (laughs) actually this might be the same one (laughs) so um but hey but that's an interesting way to do that but you know is is it unfriended because they're mostly skype oh no they do do it looks like they do do a little bit of uh facebook in here too so um i think it's i feel like that's popped up on netflix too so i don't know i anybody seen that let me know how that how that turned out i have a feeling it's super super weird so uh chilla what's your awesome thing of the week so 
my awesome thing of the week. I think it came on the tail end of CES. I'm not sure 100% if it was talked about at CES, but it's called, there's a company called Endless, and they're going kind of after that one laptop per child market, Mm -hmm. but they're solving it through a PC. And the cool thing I thought was the cheapest model comes in at $79, and it's kind of, I really like the look of the computer. It's kind of like an inverted teardrop. or a, No, it's kind of like a teardrop, but it has like four pointy things at the bottom. Or maybe it looks like a ghost from Pac-Man. I don't think, I really don't think we're describing this very well for our audio listeners. <laughs> so it looks kind of like a pod. I, I, now I feel like we're playing like like that drawing, when there's a draw or something. Um, no, it looks like a pod. Think of Facehugger from um, from Half-Life, if we're going to get that, that level of geeky. Um, but no, yeah, it's like a, it is like a little pod that is, um, uh, beside your computer and, and there's like one port on this thing. So I don't know. Oh, there's multiple ports. Look on the, so, well, I mean, so on that's the, the front end port, that's right. the USB port. Okay. If, if you scroll down, you'll see there's kind of like a ball oh, okay. version and then there's like the ghost from Pac-Man version and the back of it. And the cool thing that I thought was, is that keeping in mind that these are, these are meant for kind of underdeveloped countries and whatnot so they're coming in at that 79 dollar price point wow um so you're getting a gig of ram um 24 gig of storage you're getting wired ethernet usb 2.0 ports hdmi and composite video um and a headset and combo mic jack um what i thought was kind of cool about this is that they're trying to make it where it plugs into any tv so okay. I thought that was kind of a neat concept versus the trying to get a, get it to a laptop type form factor that comes in at a more expensive price point. They're trying to get it, this thing to where it hooks up to to virtually any any TV, and then it has an operating system on it that's that's pretty low end Unix Linux, but it it's meant to run on low end hardware and it's it's uses the power of the cloud. Um, so I thought it was a it was a, a very neat concept, and hopefully it, it this this really takes off. I, I, this, this looks like you know, and, and I love the idea of these like maybe even not underdeveloped uh, uh, countries, but something you know like we look at like Raspberry Pi or something like that, right? Like oh, that's a thing I can just plug into over here, and it does a thing, right? Like if you're looking at maybe yes. even home, home automation kind of things. Or, or something. Is it even running? Like, is it running Windows or is it running some kind of uh, Linux? No, it's running a it's running a flavor of Linux called okay. Endless. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get your your Linux type applications. You're probably gonna get Firefox and Chrome. And I saw in one of the screen captures there was a Skype app and a YouTube app. And so you're gonna get you're gonna get your mainstream applications that you typically would. Wow. Um, but they're going to, this, this is meant for anyone in the entire world to be able to afford. Right. Right. And, and even and so, it, something like this, I feel like this is the kind of thing, much like Chromebooks, I feel like you could throw at, you know, not as computerized people that like, I just need to get right. on the internet. But, and, and I think when you look at the Chromebook, you're still talking about a, uh, 200 300 dollar price point this is sub 100 dollars. Right. Right. so this goes back to that whole commodore 64 slash atari generation of buy it bring it home and hook it up to your existing equipment mm-hmm. so pretty much all you need is a, a tv i like it yeah because, i mean like, yeah the mac mini kind of concept right Right. Um, I, I we just did this where uh, so so the the iMac was starting to uh, kind of uh, uh, fall off. It was a 2010 iMac uh, at the at my one client. So I was like, just just get a Mac Mini. It's all you need. Just get make sure you have at least this spec. So it was like the second tier up. Make sure you you you, you top out that RAM. And uh, and I'm just scavenging for uh, 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 monitors from around the office <laughs> to 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 kind of fill that gap. I missed the giant IMAX screen, but but still it's just like I'm not going to make you spend another $3000 on an IMAX just for the one day a week I'm in here, you know? Um just just get this thing. Just it's fine, you know, and 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 we're good to go and we're up and going. So for for under a thousand, well in that case under a thousand dollars, but still, um, it kind of comparative to something like this. So mm-hmm. I like this. I love this concept. Um, and I hope it gets. I hope these little pod people make it all around the world and help people get online. <laughs> so, and I'm seeing that when you you know you really do see that on the other side. 
uh, the, the the ghost kind of thing more. Like it's got a little mm-hmm. with all the ports and everything like that. So awesome. So my awesome thing of the week, um, I uh, I've talked about automatic on here before. Uh, got one of the early pre-release, not pre-release, but like pre-ordered versions of it. So I have like the 1.0, and I think they've upgraded it with a little bit better hardware since. And uh, it was on a uh, fairly old 2005 Buick Rendezvous, uh, and uh, it, which has kind of been taken off road recently. Uh, so, and we have a newer um, uh, 2012 Ford with a with the sync and everything like that, and it, it has some of those features. Uh, you know, not 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 the cool sync that has a screen and everything like that. More the one with the Bluetooth. That doesn't work for me half the time, and the uh, the voice activation that I have to yell at and get mad at uh, that that kind of of, of thing. Uh, but uh, so uh, I, I it's been sitting there for a while. So I, I snagged the uh, automatic out of the little dongle that goes on your OBD port. OBD O O B D O B D. Yeah, is something on something onboard, is it onboard, onboard diagnostic? Onboard diagnostic OB, OBD. Um, so I found I found that and uh, uh, stuck it in the Ford and. Uh, and because I knew they were adding features, I keep getting the emails about, "Hey, we got this going on. We can interact with these other applications." I think it'll actually send mileage to my FreshBooks account. Um, it you can set certain things to happen with if this then that, for instance. Um, but even just plugging it in and bringing up the app, I get new stuff like like the, it'll pop up the uh, your mileage, like how many how many miles till till empty, and and that now pops up on my phone. So when it's like, oh, geez, I got to go out. I got to go out and drive an hour tomorrow. Uh, geez, what am I going to do? Uh, or do I need to get gas, you know, in the morning for that drive or I have to deal with that in the middle of traffic? I can just pull up my phone and double check where my gas was at <laughs> instead of going, instead of waiting until the morning until I finally crawl out to the, uh, to, to the car itself, right? Um, well, that's yeah. a nice feature to begin with. Um, but also, they, they're, I start, since I reactivated the thing, I started getting these emails. I got a, a year to date, like, you know, WordPress and all these other services send you um, your, re- your own review on like social media. I got a year in review on my driving. It was a little mixed up because it was like the one car and that, that I was driving less and less and less throughout the year um, because it was the older, lower mileage one. And, uh, and then there was like three months where I just didn't drive it at all until we moved to the new car for the system. So it's a little skewed, but very interesting. Um, but then I started getting, I got, I got a monthly report card, guys. Um, and if you remember, this is, this is the thing. So um, it tracks your mileage. It tracks your, your uh, fuel per gallon. It, 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 it tries to dissuade you from doing things that, that cost fuel going over 70 miles per hour, um, hard stops, hard, hard uh, uh, speed ups. And it'll give you certain chimes to remind you, oh, hey, don't, don't, don't do that thing. Um, and it'll give you an idea about how you drive. And for instance, like they, they have these crazy data insights in here, like how the holidays impact when we drive. And it looks at the average of on when people, uh, when drivers leave home um, around the holidays and everything, or when drivers get home, uh, it, it's pretty awesome. And then it digs into to my stuff. How much did I drive um, um, each car last month, for instance? Um, and you know, which is holy crap, 568 miles. Uh, I, that was a lot of visiting home, uh, for instance. Uh, but you know, your, your, your per gallon, um, all the stats, um, your average, your, your cost in, in gas for, you know, that time, how many times you hard accelerated and did all the things that it, it, uh, slaps you on the wrist to do. Uh, I'm really bad on braking apparently. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, and it's really interesting to kind of see that stuff like even better than it used to. It actually still has year in review and it's a nice visual kind of thing too um like i said you know pretty much oh, i got a lot we should do it we should do a comparison because i don't get a year i didn't get a year in review but i get a monthly report card from mm-hmm. nest for my for my energy consumption is related to my heat so i'd be interested like how does it compare from an information perspective but also from a from a graphical perspective because their their monthly report card is very pretty. Yeah, this is too, and even the dashboard because they started the thing a while ago where you could actually uh, log in. And you know, I miss Google Latitude. Um, Latitude was a thing where it would kind of track you as you go in, and I, I think it was supposed to be like a Foursquare kind of thing, but it would just follow you on your phone and um, automatically kind of check you in. Uh, and but but I like that I could go look at a month, especially when I was driving around to a lot of lot of interviews during some of my gigs. Um, 
like I could see this map of everywhere I had been. And at the time I was traveling to to in-laws up in New York or 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 doing doing some shoots at different places over in Ohio and and going across state the other way to Philadelphia. And I could see this map of where the heck I traveled in a certain period of time. And now I get that again with uh i get that again with 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 this because it, it again i can go to the month and say oh where did i go in december you know and you see the squigglies a bunch of them around pittsburgh and then like all this stuff like kind of going north uh, as i'm visiting family um I, I think i think that's really cool a really cool visualization to see like what your kind of footprint is for something like that um uh, maybe more so if you drive a little bit more or, or a little bit further out even like even down to the point where um in here i'll bring this up for you guys on the visual so this is the nice graphical thing on, on the video feed guys and you know days behind the wheel i spent five and a half days behind the wheel this and some of you some of you that have a very significant commute you will hate yourself when you see what your number is going to be at this thing uh, miles driven uh miles on a single trip uh states i've driven in pennsylvania uh <laughs> I didn't have a very active out of state. Uh, my uh, my my CO two impact. Um, it would take sixty four point seven large trees uh, required to offset what I generate in CO two emissions. <laughs> so those kinds of things, fuel costs, how much I spend fuel, ugh, uh, miles per gallon, things like that. Um, so I, I think it's really cool. It's like a hundred bucks uh, for this little thing, um, and there's other other OBD OBD. Um, um, things that will interact with apps on android um this is this is iphone or android for for what they're doing there's other nice features in there like uh it'll detect if you've been in an accident because of the uh the, the um gyroscope or the accelerometer on your phone and it will actually go ahead and call and gps out the uh the ambulance and emergency services and also even contact your your um uh, list of emergency contacts along with that uh so kind of an on store like on star like a uh, service along with it and uh it'll also uh, uh you can also have a uh, built-in parking like where did i park and, and go find it on, on a gps so uh really cool they're always improving and i haven't even dived into a lot of that app integration stuff like like the idea that i can go in afterwards and mark okay that was a business trip that was a business trip that wasn't a business trip and and now that's in there for my tax purposes later so it's another cool automation thing for your driving if you're doing that still if you're not taking ubers everywhere so here's a question. Here's a question for somebody that doesn't have a car that's been asking me. Uh, Ubers or Zipcar? Putting that out there. So um, is there, I would say, is there a Zipcar near them? It's convenient. Let's presume there is. Presume there is. I, I'll be honest with you. I, so I haven't taken many, I haven't taken any Ubers, not to lie. But I, I look at Uber as more of like the cab. I'm going to call it on demand and wait whereas Zipcar is more plan in advance right right make your reservation i i was a zip car member for three or four years i really really enjoyed my time mm -hmm. as a zip car member um but i will say as a zip car member i also used cabs at the time so Right. It was kind of depending on was I hauling something. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I was hauling something or large scale grocery shopping, I would have said Zipcar. Mm -hmm. If I was trying to get to a business meeting or get home from a bar, I would say Uber. Hmm. What? I think. Well, go ahead. Uh, Zipcars are more in my mind trips. Like you're going somewhere specifically, like Chilla said, like planning ahead. Um, Ubers are more spur of the moment, I guess, is how I would classify the two of them. Maybe not as like surprise spur of the moment, but as more less planning, like you said. Right, right. Like I get there, I have a, a new borough come pick me up. Uh, interesting, yeah. an interesting question for people that and the person asking in, in particular, I, I presume they'll have a zip car nearby. Uh, for this, if they're considering something like this, or or even, I think the idea was they can very easily take public tra transportation downtown uh, to to get a zip car. So that might be a big part of it too. Um, 
just something something to put out there for for those considering kind of transportation issues um because i mean this this is a thing for people who live in a city that say well i've had public transportation or access to taxis or maybe i never took a taxi now i can take an uber right um I took- and, and for i would stick with that concept for for an uber the zip car to me has a purpose of i I need to get somewhere and bring something back. Mm-hmm. Like there's the concept of the Uber transports you, the zip car transports you and other people or things. You can't get an Uber to go pick up you and your groceries when you're done at the market district. I don't know. Can you, I guess you, I don't see any could. reason why you could. Well, that's after you have order in advance and have them bring them out to the car. I mean, if we're going to do this, let's do oh, this right. We're not going to go shop inside. Round. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. I mean, well, in the end, like we were talking about, I think I think we were talking about it on the show a little bit ago. I can't remember if it's that or, or somewhere else. Um, you know, uh, they just go and get the groceries for you at, at a certain point and say, listen, Market District, I'm going to do curbside, but I'm sending my Uber driver for that. Um, it all connects and you don't have to leave the home. So, you know what you, well, if you're in the area, you don't have to leave the room, the, the home for this too. Uh, Slice on Broadway, our friends uh, supporting uh, the uh, Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Thank you so much to them for supporting the show for uh, nearly two years now. And uh, they're up here on the tracks, the very snowy tracks tonight in Beachview. Uh, thousands of people, thousands of you. Let me, let me call some people out here. Thousands of you past this place every day on your commute speaking of commutes uh to work out of the south hills you can stop off and pick up a pizza you can go say hi to rico and the guys uh really cool friendly people great stuff also hey that damn exit's open for carnegie pa you can get there uh down on the main street for their second location and apparently if somebody wins a powerball they're going to see about franchising in long uh, long beach um, almost said Long Island. That'd be good for you guys too. They're out in Long Island. Uh, so uh, slice on Broadway, slice on Broadway dot com. Uh, great. Uh, they make their stuff like for reals with uh, fresh ingredients. They're the best stuff, and uh, really cool, really cool place. And it's it's my 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 preferred place for business meetings. You can get to the South Hills, and uh, uh, we're we're gonna go to Slice. And I know there's a few guys I got to line up here. I know, I know, uh, we had Rob on Dutters. You missed Rob again last week. What, oh, what the I heck? You're you avoiding him. Thanks. Um, so maybe we'll have to get him out for a pizza party here in the South Hills. Yes, too. please. So, uh, so with that, go check out slice on Broadway. Dot com, Facebook, Instagram, PGH underscore slice on the Twitters. And you'll be hungry too. All right, let's get into some other things here. Uh, let's see. We got an app of the week. Is this? Oh, this is the one we were talking about right before the show. It's very peachy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, who's got the lowdown? What, what, I just installed this thing. I, I actually, I think they were talking about it over on This Week in Tech, but it, I missed what it was and, and, and never, didn't get a chance to roll back with it. This is the thing that kind of took everybody by storm at the end of uh, CES. It's peach. It's on the iPhone. What, what, what do I do with this? So it's it's kind of a chat, and and I think what one of the things that it may have come up on one of the the Twit Network shows is because I've I've been hearing on a lot of their shows they're looking for what is the answer for cross platform chat. <clears throat> We've had the conversation, right? We're we're kind of going to Slack. They're having the conversation. You know, what do you tell your family and friends? Is it if if you're an iMessage user, that doesn't always go port to Android. If you leave the platform, it doesn't work well. So this is another, hey, here's a, <clears throat> um, oh, for some reason, somebody, I activated my, my assistant. Um, <laughs> but it, this is this is kind of another chat client. You can add your friends. The interesting thing is when you're when you're typing a message, you can actually start to type in keywords so if you go in there sorg and you type in um here just the word here what? you'll see kind of down at the bottom it starts to pre-fill a here colon add current location you tap that and it pulls in pulls that into where you're at 
That I'm not seeing. So I, I clicked on you, and how do I? So go to go to your go to your chat window. Oh, this is me here. Okay. So go to you, and where it says write something, and there's the picture of the camera and, and the light bulb. Mm -hmm. And type here, and see how next to the camera it auto fills in like a. Oh yeah, here at the current location in the middle, and then I'll I'll hit that. It, it wants me to do locations. I'm gonna allow it. So we're trying media home base. It even got it right. Uh, something that that that, that uh, Instagram so, hasn't been doing lately. So they they have a couple. They, I mean, they have they have a, a slew of cool ones. Like if you type in dice, it gives you a prompt to roll the dice, and it will give you a random dice roll. Oh, well, that's awesome. Six sided, two, two six sided dice. Um, if you want to share your battery percentage, if you want to rate something, um. You can give current weather, events. Um, typing Safari will open the browser to search for a link. Um, date and time will add spell out the current date or the current time. Um, there's there's a lot of cool features when it comes to that. You can type you can type in the GIF, um, and a search button will crop up and it'll allow you to search for a GIF. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, I, I am, I'm almost viewing it as it's like a, I'm going to, it's, it's like my timeline from Facebook. Yeah. It, but, but like super, like super interactive, I guess. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. Cause I, I love, so I'm pulling this up. It, it, I, I was, I'm kind of doing a couple of these while you're, well, I know you can't see the video on this thing. So I, I typed GIF, it, it pops up the prompt at the bomb. I, I type happy, I hit go. It shows me the first kind of random happy GIF. There's a guy clapping saying yay. And I can actually um, scroll through these. And is it everything? Or I hit post and I'll send which one, whatever one I selected. So uh, that, that was a great one for me to select there. Uh, but uh, no, I, I, it's an interesting uh, integrative kind of inline typing tool, I guess. And you said this is the interesting thing. Uh, there's an idea thing, and I, uh, an idea light bulb. And I click on that and it says, you know, it gives you kind of ideas. It says, uh, uh, name an artist that you love. Uh, what's your favorite smell? Kind of conversation um, starters. Uh, what was the other one? What's cliche about you? And I can answer that. Uh, I'm a walking cliche of a uh, podcaster in his basement. Let's go. <laughs> All right. And we're going to post that. So there's an idea of like, even if you're not good at being social, it gives you an idea of what to be social about, I guess. So, um, but yeah. But I, I kind of like it from the aspect of I'm not going to get a unified timeline of all the people mm -hmm. I have to go pick the person I'm looking for. I can see what they've posted and then I can comment on their posts. Well, Alex is in the chat and he's saying, uh, wow, it looks nifty. I'm going to download it on my Android, right? No, wait, nope. this is iPhone <laughs> no, only. Won't. It's Oops. called peach. It's in the top 10 of the app store already. It looks like. Um, so, so yeah, I, I I don't know. It, it, and somebody was asking, what's that super secure version of Facebook that we saw before? And I think Ello was one of them. I think there was another one as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, this is, will it catch on? I don't know. Uh, so here's, here's the, so is this more one on one? Or like once I have more than just you, Chilla, what is my feed going to look like? Or do so I? So you're, you're not going to, and I guess that's the thing though, you're not going to have a feed, right? Okay. You're going to have a list of all your friends you and they're and in their bubble. So go back to your main window. Your your thing should be at the top, then there should be a button tell a friend, add a friend, right, and then you. all your friends show up down below that. So you're going to see a list of all your friends, I'm guessing in chronological order of the last person to post kind of like a timeline update. And then you're going to be able to go in there and see kind of their timeline and comment on their timeline okay to me going back to that point is to me this is a i can post whatever my thought is at this point in time um or i can go find you and i can comment on on kind of like your your thing yeah yeah oh interesting well I, we'll we'll see how this catches on so here's the other thing katie because i know you're the hacker of the yaks 
Um, <laughs> wh- what do you see? I mean, is this just going to be a social thing? One, how the hell do you make, they make money from something like this? Maybe they don't think about it this early on. But can do you see, like, what would you use this for on a business side? Uh, um, depends on, I guess, on the, the uh, audience that you have there. I mean, it depends on who's moving over there. I haven't quite seen this, the demographics, whether like an age group or a um, particular market. Well, um, well, it's been popular for like four days. So I, I, yeah, that's I, what I, I, I think the, I think the science like, is, are we skewing is still to millennials out. again. Are we skewing to adults? Are we skewing towards new parents, which Facebook, you know, there's, there's multiple things, but I think as far as like with any platform is giving an, another exclusive channel to put different content. Like if you, like you want to reward your, um, customers with different things on different channels. Cause if you post the same thing across the board, uh, you're not going to get much response. But if I reward, you know, if I know a certain group, like an age group, like Chilla's, you know, there's Chilla's on this page and Chilla loves tech. I would post things that he would be interested in is kind of a reward for following me. And then he would want to stick with me and see what I'm up to. Mm-hmm. So, so a very, a very Snapchat ish kind of thing. Like and, and, mm-hmm. and I have a problem wrapping my head around Snapchat still because I'm like, but, but it's just my friends. How do I reach out from it? You know, and, and this seems like it seems very similar to that. Well, from a Snapchat perspective, I mean, I see a lot of people on like uh, uh, Twitter and whatnot posting their actual Snapchat follow thing, mm-hmm. and also using it that follow thing as their kind of picture in a lot of cases Mm -hmm. so that's where i could see where you're saying you know how do i get my reach out there right i feel like that's kind of how you do that through snapchat you have to figure out also snapchat think of it almost like an instagram where you're just putting out visual content Mm -hmm. so it's not so much you're putting out like the like a setup scene but it could be like very quick very oh hey check this out like or look at this so you just kind of, I don't know, but it's an extension quick, of an Instagram, quick, I think, almost, like, or yeah. at least the same idea. Quick check-ins, basically, right? Mm-hmm. So. All right. Hey, uh, Doug Durda, he's, uh, uh, again, big on the social medias. Uh, you know this guy? Yeah, shouldidrinkthat.com. We'll give him a shout just because. Uh, so he had a pretty cool, uh, uh, he asked if we'd seen, seen uh, this thing from, uh, I think it's popped up at CES, or it's available uh, right now. Um, but he's he's hoping to get his hands on on something like this and test it out. So you know, there's a lot of devices for you. Get this iPhone, and you can add on and cameras and audio and everything to make it more of a capable camera. Uh, this is something called the Ceramonic Smart Mixer Professional. Let me get the full name: uh, Professional Recording Stereo Microphone Rig for iPhone and Android Android smartphones. So there you go. If you have an Android, this is something that'll work for you because uh, it, it was really just kind of using your your headphone jack at this point. Uh, so it's it's a nice stick. It's a stick. Uh, it's a stick that uh, that you, uh, you, know, you you stick your smartphone into, and it's got a really good um, onboard kind of directional microphone situation at the top. And and that's I, that's the really important thing is to get that microphone. It's using full on XLR mics from the looks of things. And uh, well, actually, they look like they're plugging the headphone jacks, but it's got some uh, capabilities for for adding maybe some XLR stuff, which is kind of on higher end. Uh, mic sort of connection uh, and it's gonna one it's gonna keep everything a little bit more stable by being that kind of stick kind of setup um, but then also uh, you know this is like a super selfie stick now that I think about it like a super capable selfie stick so don't take it to a pens game okay <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I you know what? This is going to lead into an interesting conversation later with CES and headphone jacks and new phones and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is the first thing you know? That's now the first thing I look at when I look at these things. I'm like, oh, you're using a headphone jack? Huh? That'll be obsolete soon. <laughs> but, but but that's a difference. Something like this, because usually um, somebody's you know somebody's asking me where where can I get a good microphone. Uh, you know, I have an Android phone, and it's like, well, if you had an iPhone, I have a lot of options for you because they make a lot of things. And the big thing is, instead of using that headphone jack, which you know can have issues, um, you're using the port on the bottom that's proprietary, whether it be the newer iPhone with the Lightning connector or the older one with the 30 pin. Um, it takes more capabilities. All this does is port the audio in, and you you just take it in on whatever app you use on your phone. So it's it's up to that from there, right? Versus mm-hmm. if you get one of these high rig systems, it's plugging into that specialized thing in the bottom. 
it's 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 taking advantage of of, of maybe a few more features in, in the application and that's what kind of limits it and and there's not some there's not a commonality in ports there's not commonality in audio drivers i understand for android and that's been the big dis distractor but something like this this is going to be fully capable because it plugs in that headphone jack and presumably it does the right thing so it it because you it's kind of a special port on this and 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 even most of our computers that have only one uh, um, audio jack anymore uh, that takes that microphone on that third stripe like mm -hmm. i can't just take a microphone with a headphone jack and plug it in and it works on newer computers it just doesn't work it, it, it's not looking for the right thing um, so, which is kind of a problem I've been having. I had a drag, I had a drag at my computer from 2005 to a gig yesterday to capture audio from a microphone I had, um, because I have nothing else with an import anymore, um, between all, between the PCs and the Macs around here. So that's kind of an, an outside. You thing. can take, you can take your, they sell like a, the combo, combo ports to, to split out headphone left right and mic uh, they do i found them not to be very reliable or exactly going where i need to or i grab one of these usb dongle things you remember this thing that would give you the the actual split ports and then it fails on me during a live broadcast yeah i wouldn't trust the Broadway. usb thing because that's usb and it's doing a bunch of conversion behind yeah, the mat it's yeah but that's using a bunch of software behind the scenes the, to your point of like the the three the the, the the TRRS that that is like a standard and the, the order of them is standard. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bad one of those, I, I would think that would be a lot more rare. We right. have, we have a ton of those at work for doing exactly what you're talking about. Cause all the PCs now also have gone to a single port for headphone and mic. And, and you're, you are exactly correct, especially on the Android side. It all depends on what drivers they bundled in with their device of even how the like reverse USB stack kind of works. So mm -hmm. the one thing I will say in, in, in a future state, I'm thinking there's they're going to have to sell some kind of converter for the headphone type jack, older hardware, as well as to your point, even if you had a 30-pin a device for an iOS um, device and you got a newer one and it had Lightning, they sell the Lightning converter module that's like 20 bucks. So you can at least continue to use that older hardware. Um, I don't know. I, I think this, this tech's cool. It gets to the point I start to ask myself, I'm carrying a backpack full of stuff to connect to my phone. Why don't I just <laughs> throw my laptop in that bag? That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. but, but Apple, and I've, I'm seeing other companies do it as well, but Apple in the, in the holidays, they started to sell entire kits in store that are a combination of third party devices to do this kind of stuff. So, Maybe it actually has this in the kit along with a light kit for video, or it'll be a photography kit that has the bolt-on lenses with a light kit. So they're they're definitely Apple's definitely taking this into into account, and I'm seeing other companies starting to look at this like Samsung. I think the big difference is, um, yeah, you look at okay, I have a $700 phone plus all this other stuff. Why don't I just put all that money into a real camera? But I think there's also, you don't factor in that initial $700 because one, maybe it was on contract or something for the first thing. Um, but also, it's the thing you had anyways. It wasn't a mm -hmm. phone. It wasn't, it was a phone first that you happen to have. So you needed to buy the phone. You did. And it happens to have all these other capabilities. And we can add on a couple of things and spend like three, $400 more and have something that's really, really good versus the questionable like uh, $400 a uh, 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 smart camera Kodak thing, which I, I don't know, it really GoPro kind of blows that out of the water, uh, that that kind of thing. Um, but even GoPro is not the best for every situation either. But if you can turn this into doing something, I mean, it's really impressive between what we've seen with some schools doing here uh, with with TouchCast and, and, and somebody was just showing me they were impressed by this this movie that was done on an I, I, I completely on an iPhone success. Um, you know, I mean, they're very capable and it just takes that little bit more. You can't, you could, if you're super good at it, but you can't just take this iPhone out and, and film some stuff and, and be able to go, um, um, on a certain level of things. You just need some capabilities like the audio 
and stuff like that. So, well, can I put out an appeal or, or a um, scavenger hunt for our audience in Chilla? I would love if you could find me a Bluetooth um, mic that you could just clip onto a person that you're interviewing instead of something wired. I would, at a reasonable price. Ah, uh, Bluetooth. Nah. I don't think Bluetooth yeah. is going to be a good solution for you. Well, uh, Wi-Fi or what do you well, think? Well, we uh, more RF. Uh, we I actually have. Oh, okay. And I didn't test that. Maybe it does work, and I'm wrong with this. Um, but we have what we use for Unsung were these uh, $150, $200. Um, they're, they're over here somewhere. Um, um, just, you know, battery packs, you know, with mm -hmm. the, that, that, you know, so if you have a speaker that's moving around a bit, you know, you can you can mic them up and, and that could plug in. And if it had the right end on it, and you can probably get the right end for it, it would plug right into something like this. So... Mm -hmm. My, my only other thing, yeah. if that's running like an RF, and then you're going to have to make sure you airplane mode this thing. Um, because I still even, even today with this newer phone, with the 5S phone, um, I was in a room uh, last night where um, I was down to like one bar of LTE, 4G, whatever. Sometimes no service depending on where I walked. And I was still hearing that on my my camera, you know, my full on camera. Um, so that's mm -hmm. still an issue you got to watch out for, especially when you're out and about. So, Dylan? I was gonna say when you get to Bluetooth, as long as you're so you're looking for lapel mics that mm -hmm. are Bluetooth enabled for recording. The 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 thing that I would say that where you're gonna run into problems is I personally I think the distance. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're willing to keep the phone within ten feet, mm -hmm. and then at that point in time, why not just run a wire? Mm -hmm. That's where I, I I don't know what the the purpose of what you're trying to look for i mean they do make them mm -hmm. um just looking them up but you're probably talking 150 to 200 dollars yeah it'd be pricey too um yeah. but you're gonna get your i mean but those are for devices that are 12 hours of talk time 150 hours standby it's a lapel mic using bluetooth 3 so it's that's why it's getting its good battery life like there are definitely devices out there for this mm -hmm. i guess it just my question I, I always try to be price conscious when uh -huh. it comes to this kind of stuff. What are you gaining by it being wireless? Right. And because your wireless is going to be to, to, to Sorg's point about, you know, look at RF cause you, you can get distance off of RF. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to have to be that close, then why not be wired? I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's just, just a question. I try I, cause I knew the guy was going to be moving and I was like, okay, I have, we have several mics on the guy, but I know this one would be better if it worked. And I knew he was going to be moving throughout the room. And, uh, and, and I don't know, honestly, I have to go back and listen to it. I, 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 cause I was unable to monitor it cause, cause I was shorthanded, but, um, you know, I don't know if it worked out the entire way. I don't know if it cut out cause I know and sometimes you'll get that, that fuzz in there, you know, um, we used, we use RF at work and they work pretty well and you mm -hmm. can get a good, 150 200 feet on them right right i don't think these then are, you're not going to get that on bluetooth yeah i don't think these are quite so 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 good at that and there was some interesting yeah. maybe i don't know there could have been crazy interference in there we've we've had things i've had a wired connection and we went and shot something up on um on mount washington our first shoot with unsung and we were right under one of those radio towers and i heard nothing but radio because the wire may not have been shielded and it was oh it wasn't up. it was it acting was, like an antenna it was a super thin one uh to a lapel so I had to have them do a hand mic and do an XLR, which is a lot thicker, and uh, that seemed to do the job. So, uh, yeah, again, you got to see it, whenever possible, except for in that situation, uh, wired is just going to be more reliable. So, yeah, it, it, it can. Where I went to college because the college had a radio station. A lot of TVs, even when the TV was off, mm -hmm. the the speakers on the TV would pick up the radio station. We used to pick up a radio station through the board in our podcast and stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> like like it, it drove us nuts for for a long time i it, it, i think it was down here even i'm just like what do i hear where is that coming from and just just absolutely going insane with this stuff so all right hey well, i think go ahead well i you were asking me why i wanted one yeah i think it's more the how we're talking about these portability issues mm -hmm. of trying to have a gazillion things of tech and condensing it down to a much smaller space it was more of a Here's like one less thing of I'm having to pack in a giant bag. 
It was right. more the thought mm-hmm. process of right. like being an on, you know, something that I throw in my bag that if case something happens, I could just be like, here, take this, let's do this, let's go. As opposed to like, oh, hold on, let me pull out my laptop bag and grab these wires and do this and this battery pack. It was just kind of more of a on the spur of the moment, like mm-hmm. when you're out and about kind of a thought Isn't process. Isn't it? You, could, you could look for a high-end Bluetooth headset. Mm-hmm. And probably get away cheaper with like a seventy-five to hundred dollar Bluetooth headset that you would use to make phone calls, and use that as your. I've seen people use the the recording application to record record notes and and mm-hmm. whatnot. So I could, if it's only one person talking, yeah. I think if you get into the two person talking idea. You can go back two years, three years to the how to podcast from your iPad at PodCamp with Boss Jock and <laughs> yeah. some of that stuff, which is yeah. pretty cool and pretty slick. I think it's the equivalent of, you know, if I can just get away with doing my computing with an iPad and a, and a Bluetooth keyboard, why don't I just carry that around instead of a big mm-hmm. laptop? You know, I, and it's the video equivalent of that. Well, if I can just take this little bit instead of this little bit and this thing I'm taking anyways... Mm-hmm. Why don't I just do that? So yeah, and that mobility, especially if you're, you know, hey, I lug the big bag around. You, Katie, you've seen the biggest Panasonic camera that I have. Uh-huh. That thing, uh, the entire four days of New York City Comic Con in 2011, just uh-huh. insanely killed my shoulder the entire time. And uh, yeah. versus now, it's like, well, geez, I'm just going to get an alley and, and take this thing. You know, why not? And mm-hmm. uh, and that's that's kind of where we're at right now. If you want to do those things. Um, and that's why I see the other people doing it. I think, why do I have a three thousand dollar camera when when we could just be using this stuff? So mm-hmm. that's the way to go. Well, uh, that was an educational period right there. Uh, another educational <laughs> period. Hey, well, Katie actually was uh, with us for a workshop the other night up at Work Hard Pittsburgh as part of Sidekick Media Services. We had fun Insta content talking about making stuff for uh, Snapchat and and Periscope and the new Facebook Live that I've been talking about over on the uh, Basic Sorgonomics over at Sorgatron.com. But uh, Sidekick Media Services is our one-stop solution uh, for uh, video content. Uh, you know, If you're a business looking to get your story out there in video and social media and or to be educated, we got a great newsletter up there, uh, the, the Sorgatron Media and Sidekick Creators newsletter. And if you go sign up for that right now, uh, you'll get our introduction to audio podcasting webinar for free for you guys to watch and uh, and learn from and then hopefully get a few uh, tips out of. And you can check out other stuff that we've worked on over the years, uh, such as this uh, Lucky After Dark, a great documentary done with the Pittsburgh Foundation and uh, on the, uh, some great history and, uh, and other stuff going on there. And if you, you need help with your project, let us know, and hopefully we can educate you along the way. Sidekickmediaservices.com. Check it out, and, uh, and it will help you with your project. So uh, CES was a thing that happened. I know you guys got a few stories in here from that. Uh, so I, I want to defer to you guys for the next thing we kind of poke at here. Although there might be a lot more than CES as I'm looking here. Let, okay, first of all, since we were talking already a little bit about um, um, car solutions, um, I, I, this does have to be factored in here. Uh, Katie, what's going on with Lyft? Uh, Lyft it has stumbled on a great market in regards to seniors who need to get to their doctor's appointments or um, any sort of visits like that. And a lot of them don't have smartphones. And obviously that's how you order a Lyft driver or, or another type of driver. And they're looking at a service. It's kind of like a third party service that allows the person who is the elderly person to call and arrange these things. And then somebody goes on to the essentially kind of pulls up a Lyft driver for them so they can, um, be able to go to their doctor's appointments because I, I forget the exact number in the article, but it was a staggering number of uh, elderly that missed their appointments because they just didn't have transportation. Mm-hmm. And I just I think this is an awesome idea, especially I, for Lyft to get into or, or car driving service because it, it is difficult for them to get around, especially if they don't have a car anymore or a license. That's awesome! Um, mm-hmm. I, wow, because yeah, we all I, I mean, we we've seen the kind of uh, people mover buses, right? Like mm-hmm. through our neighborhoods, they're, they're, you know, obviously picking up, you know, uh, you know, grandma for our groceries and everything. Um, mm-hmm. and that's a nice solution. And, and I think a pretty cool way for uh, that to, to kind of uh, 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 fill, fill a need. So, I mean, well, and and I, I think this is a great opportunity for someone to get into that, into that market or that demographic and try to try to push the other companies. Cause the one thing I have heard 
uh, sorg from kind of what you're talking about like the people mover or the access or whatever a, a lot of it's you know hop in the get get in the queue to take to wait your turn you can try to book in advance but they're not always on time and then to katie's point then they miss their appointment I, i've heard of people that they they get picked up late they still try to make their appointment but they missed it and then they're dropped off and then they have to wait yet again for it to be picked back up for an appointment that they never even got to actually take um so i think this is another one of those great opportunities for someone to come into to a market and and try to to not only make a difference with what they offer but try to get other companies to to offer a better experience all right um good good so we'll see what happens with lyft and well uh, yeah lyft's, lyft's taking the, the the grandparents and uber's uh uh delivering us our, our groceries and cigarettes right so I, I will say I, I I don't know what it is what it looks like for you guys, but being downtown during the day, I see a lot more Ubers than I do Lyfts, mm -hmm. unless I'm missing something. What's identifiable of a Uber versus a Lyft? They don't still have the giant pink mustache, right? Stickers. Stickers? Yeah, they have a sticker. Okay. Like. Yeah. So I see a lot more I see a lot more cars drive down Grant Street with the Uber sticker than I do the Lyft sticker. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I I'll be curious to see how this goes. I still have to I still have to try my first Lyft. I haven't had the opportunity to do that. Maybe I'm trying to think of my schedule in the next few days. I mean, can I take a Lyft to my doctor's appointment? Wait, yes I can. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so All right. Uh what is going on? Well, first of all, uh pour one out, our friends. <laughs> to pour one out, Chilla, to Internet Explorer 8, 9, and 10. Goodbye. Wait, what is this? So if you if you so so someone was so happy about Internet Explorer today being the last day for Internet Explorer that they have started a Kickstarter. What is um, this? Yes. And for thirty dollars you can get a t shirt. Um and the, uh, I think that's yeah, for thirty dollars you get the T-shirt. Um, for thirty-five you get a poster. Um, for sixty-four you get some limited edition posters. Um, but pretty much it's kind of a farewell web address um, signed everyone ever, um, and it okay. talks about. Um, <laughs> uh, what does it say? Today, the cries of mankind are answered. The online connectivity of the world will begin a long-awaited transformative path towards an internet free of unnecessary convolution, free of evil, tyrannical cross-browser incompatibility, free of Internet Explorer. Um, so, yes, today Microsoft deprecated um, multiple Internet Explorer versions, leaving only IE 11 and their edge browser which seems and sounds like it's a lot more compliant with current day standards there's still like a internet explorer 11 right am i not am i mistaken yes okay but i think when they when they went to internet explorer 11 they dropped a lot of the hey go use silverlight and hey go use all of our stuff that's mm. go use asp at, um plugins and it, they, they they killed off a lot of their this runs best on internet explorer 5 5 type stuff hmm. hmm. active x is gone um so all those additional controls plugins etc that would only work on internet explorer um are now gone and it's pretty much you have to be html5 css etc compliant interesting well, I, 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 it's such a great celebration of the Internet Explorer. <laughs> I'm always, sure it's not as big of a deal for us because I think we probably primarily use we've moved on browsers and like Firefox and Chrome. But convinced for, everybody for those around us that we're we're tied to Internet Explorer for some various reason. Mm -hmm. You're you're going to be forced to move quickly. Um, on the, today was it's on, gone on the awesome cast um, um, group on Facebook. We, uh, when the first internet explorer uh, uh, dying off story hit, or I think late last week, uh, we were sharing horror stories about clients where sites weren't working. 
because they were on an older version of Internet Explorer. <laughs> And mm-hmm. having to explain that when you're like, you know, it, and we had uh, several different cases of that uh, that people were sharing on there. So that was that was a lot of fun to tell those horror stories about those. Things. Mm-hmm. So I think at work we were stuck for the longest time on Internet Explorer 7 mm-hmm. because we had a couple active X controls that were oh. written oh. for internal use. So certain so you could do certain nifty things, but they required internet explorer seven or earlier mm-hmm. um and then our home page went full html5 css compliant which guess what wasn't in ie7 yeah pretty much any current day standard <laughs> um so we actually had to deploy an alternate browser to every workstation one for if you wanted to use these five sites and one for everything else <laughs> <laughs> wow this is, this is the kind of stuff people dance around with this, these standards mm-hmm. as they come and go it is, this is legitimate so all right hey you ever wonder what watson's been doing ever since it won jeopardy <laughs> resting no vacationing apparently Almost. not it's been doing all kinds of stuff and one of the things investing is- its winnings from jeopardy in the powerball <laughs> and picking the perfect numbers because it's watson right well apparently it's uh gonna be a, a oh that's the wrong one hi katie uh nope that's you that's you there i am um <laughs> so it will tell you when to sleep exercise and eat and this is a partnership of some sort with under armor uh, because apparently Under Armour has been, uh, and this is one of those where I, I had my Snapchat confession where I was like, you know, I heard about this story, but that didn't connect or hear the mention that it was about Watson. I heard about how Under Armour is becoming a force when it comes to um, the personal fitness technology kind of thing, uh, which they're clothing, aren't they? Uh, aren't they like activewear of some sort? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, That's what they started as. I'm obviously not active enough to know what that is. Um, but anyways, so... It, it, it's powering um, their their app. It's more than a partnership, uh, but they say it, it is going to. Uh, it will use weather data to tell you the best time and temperature for a run. So it's going to use it, it. It's bringing resources for data from the Weather Channel um, and actually going to um, help you be better at fitness, I guess, and better at, I mean, at healthy living. I can, I can see why this would make sense because so it's better to eat when your heart rate's up because you're going to metabolize and burn that food off quicker. Um, so if there's a if it's monitoring your heart rate spikes throughout the day, it could probably figure out best times for you to eat. Um, it could figure out how how good your sleep is or how well you're sleeping. So then it could figure out the best times for you to sleep and how long you need to sleep. I, I could definitely see this being something that both yes, under armor and in conjunction with Watson being very good at. Yeah. So this is kind of, this kind of the next step. We'll see how this rolls out. We'll see how it works when people kind of get it on, however they're going to get it on, on, on the app and everything. Um, that kind of predictive thing, uh, uh, going on here. Um, so, um also uh let's see let's let's hit on like one or two more here and we'll roll out of here for hey amazon amazon having a lot of news this past week um in related amazon news i watched the entirety of uh season two of mozart in the jungle on friday night how was it it was was, was amazing i i can't believe i love this show so much um so no it was like 10 episodes and and they were like 22 uh minutes each and uh watson watson is a doctor according to the chat room by the way um there you go uh but no it, and, and of course it brought home uh golden globes i was i think it alone brought home two golden globes right or was it mm-hmm. intention for it? I, I think so i think so because trans uh transparent uh was in the hunt but did not get any this of course uh beats out netflix uh not winning any golden globes this time around um I'm not even like I, I found myself between watching this recently, Master of None, uh, uh, rewatching Jessica Jones in the background as my wife was catching up with it. And I, I just I am amazed by how much I just don't see a difference between it and, and how much I don't miss Flash and Arrow before it comes back here, probably in this next week on the on the main networks. I, I, I think it's incredible. 
that uh, we're at this point. And I feel like Netflix is, it, well, even well, Prime, holy crap, has has tremendous content. I haven't even had a chance to uh, watch Man in the High Man in the High Castle. Um, there seems to be a new show of some sort every other week at this point with Netflix. Well, and that's this is actually the reason that I will not. Um, log into the the amazon app on my tivo Why? Um, because there there will be a flurry of content available to leech every waking moment of my time it is isn't it your your tivo <laughs> and, and i'll just get sucked in your tivo is like me with world of warcraft i don't even want to step into that because you, i will just be lost <laughs> um but well okay well here's something that'll keep you away from it maybe amazon will apparently stream the president's state of the union speech and I, I actually was uh, I'm happy you put that in the in the rundown because I was noticing today over time um, it got to the point where I was thinking to myself who isn't streaming the State of the Union um, YouTube is streaming it Amazon is streaming it I think Snapchat is streaming it um, so if you want to watch the State of the Union just find a stream and it's also on every major network right like yes. it's persistently on every major network. Now it's on every major online network. It, it's just one of those things like this is the next step of, well, of course, you have to have it on every major network. So everybody sees it. Everybody's going to be watching this or avoiding it anyways. Um, it is the most important thing happening at one time. And that now extends out to, well, Netflix is in our place where people watch everything, where Amazon's where people watch everything. YouTube, you know, so I, I think that's just kind of a affirmation of the importance of these as as where people are watching these things. Some people and some people will only watch on those too. Wait, did I say Netflix? Is Netflix carrying it? I don't did I just did I just know. invent I think we're safe that? There. Are we <laughs> safe there? Can so so I don't have to worry about uh, I don't have to worry about State of the Union address preempting my house of cards. Got it. Or me rewatching all my horrible movies from 2000. Like, she's all that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, oh, I love it. You just Sometimes you just need those those shows and go, oh, I remember that. I remember being in college and having these experiences. It's me every time I pull up Hackers. Um, anyways, <laughs> I can watch it. I, 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 it doesn't matter. I can still watch it. Um, What's Hackers? You've never seen the movie Hackers? Listen here, youngin'. No, oh. don't you remember someone was just saying something about that to you, Sorg, that it was a big deal that they didn't know what hackers was? Well, it was a, uh, oh, that's right. Somebody mm-hmm. did. Some other youngin. I need to get an actual youngin. That I had to, that I have to give the speech like I did that poor girl when I was looking for a copy of the DVD at the exchange downtown. She was like 22. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's not going to go watch it. <laughs> Anyways, um, there's some stuff going around Pittsburgh. Uh, not going around Pittsburgh. That sounds the snow going around Pittsburgh right now. Um, there's stuff going on in the coming weeks in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I want to give a shout out. First of all, our friends, uh, the eight, eight bit evolutions at Pittsburgh retro gaming.com got a pretty cool event going on the place that I'm just going to call the former Metropole because who's, who knows what it's called this week. Um, but you go Pittsburgh retro gaming.com. Um, they're having kind of a, a, a event. Um, it's for, uh, uh, children's hospital, um, 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 here in the area, um, they have a couple of things. First, you can go, you can go play some old school, old school games, some Nintendo, some Sega Genesis. They'll have a bunch of stuff on hand, and uh, actually, even sponsored partially by our good friends. I just noticed at the uh, Pennsylvania Coin Up uh, Gaming Hall of Fame, uh, and a whole bunch of other people from around the area. But also, they got this cool game coming out called uh, Germ Smashers. Uh, Dream Squashers, I'm sorry. And uh, I think there's going to be a discussion with this over on InsertCoinToBegin.com in the near future. Uh, But it's a cool old school game. Um, They're releasing it on iOS and Android, but they are also releasing it on the Nintendo Entertainment System and Sega Genesis. You can get it, reserve your copy, and uh, and again, it benefits the uh, Children's uh, Hospital Miracle... Uh, what's it called the uh, children's miracle network hospitals a really cool cause that they're doing that's uh january 23rd uh down there at extasia is that what we're calling it now over there in the strip in pittsburgh 10 10 a.m to 3 p.m and uh go get information get your tickets over there pittsburgh retro gaming.com also heard about this week um something called the hardware cup now it's actually kind of a national competition 
But the finals of the Hardware Cup 2015 are going to be right here in Pittsburgh. Uh, and our friends uh, Alpha Lab Gear are actually going to be carrying it. Four months, nine cities, $50,000 in prizes. Um, so there you go. They're actually going to have some stops in Ann Arbor, Boston, New York City, Chicago, San Jose, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., and Austin. Uh, so it's getting all over the place. So go check that out. Uh, Alpha Gear, alphalabgear.org slash hardware cup for more information. And we're probably going to keep an eye on that, on that and see if there's any cool stuff coming out of that to talk about here on the awesome cast. Anything coming up, any announcements, anything like that, Chilla? I've heard Apple's going, well, Apple released a slew of betas. I have a feeling you'll see some updates coming within the next week. And then I think you'll see an Apple announcement in the early March time frame. I think we're going to see that again. Google today or yesterday announced the date for I.O. That will be in May, followed by WWDC in June. So we'll be going through our typical early, late winter, early spring lull before we hit the May, June everyone gets together and releases everything apple google e3 etc coming off of ces I, I i think we'll see kind of a, a minor news and and conference lull good for a month or two <laughs> all that craziness <laughs> i even found i found I, I don't know if you saw i shared somebody like got into like this is the fridge of the future that we talked about on the show last week <laughs> like with the light and the pad and they're like yeah this is basically an old android tablet they stuck on the side of a samsung <laughs> uh or, no, because or, that had video that had cameras on the inside that can monitor what was low yeah yeah and well they had a master ca- master card system um so it would see that you're low on milk and then actually through the mask master card system go order it for you Mm-hmm. You know, and that, that's, I don't know. I don't know. I get, I get nervous by the subscriptions on Amazon that I'm not going to, I'm not going to plan that right. So I don't know. Katie, anything uh, on your radar that's coming up here in the Pittsburgh area or people should check out? Um, I, I know, I know there's somebody called Penny Avocado that's popping up on Sawtooth. Oh, I know. She's like, she seems awesome. I think I'd like to party with her. <laughs> Well, no, I, there's one event coming up for me this week, and it's Thursday night, and it involves wrestling and video games. Do you know anything about this sort? Oh, you mean the Wrestling Mayhem Show 10-year anniversary party. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I just got the five-year uh, flashback on Facebook, like, yesterday. Uh, no, we're actually going to be, we are renting out, so you don't have to pay to come down and join us 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time to uh, 10 p.m. Come down, play some video games. They got Xbox Ones, PlayStation 4s. They got an Oculus Rift there. Chilla, you should come down. Check out the Oculus, man. I don't, I, Where, where's this at? This is a looking for group in Brookline. It's another uh, hill away. It's the other side of West Liberty. You can't mm-hmm. miss it. It's down by the Canon LFGPGH.com. If you go look at I think it's listed on Wrestling Mayhem Show's uh, Facebook events. Uh, you can find information for the 10-year party. Uh, and maybe I'll share that over while I'm at it, too. Uh, click on the events over there. Where's the thing? Oh, it's not there. Where's it at? Hold on. I, I think I personally did this. But we'll share it over the awesome cast right now. Go look at that on the page. Uh, and you can uh, get some more information. Come on down. Celebrate 10 years of podcasting uh, with us at the uh, at the uh, 10-year party. Um, and uh, it, it's fun. It's a, it, it's a celebration. I, you know, I was like, should we do a show? Should we do something? I said, like, you know what? Let's just have a party. We're going to have mm-hmm. a party. And apparently, I'm going to watch the episode of Indie Mayhem Show where I was drinking while switching. And there's a lot of funny things in my drawer that people gave me um, afterwards. I'm not pulling that other thing out on this show. It's a family-friendly show. That, okay. Um, and I'm going to watch this for the first time because I don't remember what happened. But it's out on the YouTubes, and uh, we're going to get some reaction videos, I guess, um, from our friends, the Sexy Talented Dudes. But that's fun. Uh, so come join us. Looking for group uh, this Thursday, the 14th, uh, down here in Brooklyn. So, All right. It's been the awesome cast. Thank you so much. At Dudders on the Twitters. Get Twitter questions, anything like that, especially Snapchats and such. <laughs> Snapchattiness. The Snapchattiness. And also, Maybe we'll see her on Peach after she updates her iOS. Yes. Peach future, like, future, future. Peach sounds like it should be something else completely. Like <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I, I, we'll see how this goes. John Chichilla, he's at Chilla on the Twitter. He's your gadget hound. Ask him about that that fancy doodad you got. 
chill, chill on the on the peach. So find me over <laughs> there. <laughs> and chill on the peach. I'm also Sorgatron on the peach. I, that, I can't get used to that. <laughs> On the peaches, on the peaches, on the on the on the peachables. I I I, I, I how do you how do you verb that? You know, I, I'm I'm still working on it. So we're all around. It's theawesomecast.net. Um, go subscribe to us. All the places there: Patreon.com/slash/awesomecast, and uh, of course, awesomecast on the Twitters and and uh, the Facebook groups and everything. Uh, con- comment uh, with us about all the stories through the week. We uh, take that under consideration to what we talk about here. Uh, it ends up in the show. Thank you to wife of the show, Missy, uh, for uh, giving her show notes and everything so I don't have to at 3 in the morning because that's when it gets a little wonky. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for that at Rebe- Rebellious Flaw for her. And um, I think that's all I got the plugs. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for our awesome chat room joining us here live at at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.